Being selective is very important when hating guitar strings, and also for choosing a bias for your Korean boy band infatuation. Sorry, Jimin, but I'm a RM stand for life. So today we're gonna talk a little bit about how you can only hit the guitar strings that you're aiming for, how to get better at it, a few tips in improving it, and we're actually gonna be using both your picking hand and your fretting hand to help out with this. So this is one thing that I remember when I was first starting out, I would see guys always be able to hit like the exact string that they were going for without having to look at their hand. And I was like, that's just, that's just absolutely impossible. So now that I can kind of do it, I wanted to kind of share how, you know, I kind of came about it. I'm gonna be using the uh, D'Angelico Deluxe Atlantic through the Fender G Deck practice stamp to kind of demonstrate this. But first I wanna talk about your picking hand, right? And a lot of this depends on kind of your style, but I think a really great thing to start thinking about and being thoughtful about is making repetitive motions with your wrist and specifically your thumb joint. I'm just gonna kind of jam on this A minor pentatonic scale just to kind of demonstrate hitting the individual notes within that. And I think when you're first kind of starting out, you might have a tendency to really kind of go full into like the string set when really you want to get kind of the minute, uh, the single strings right there. So as you can see, as I'm making my way through the string set, hitting each string two times, and those are all downstrokes, the same really applies for going alternate picking. You can kind of see that I really just have this part of my hand moving through the string set while the base of it, really kind of my wrist, is really pretty much locked in. Now you'll also see some players kind of float and do the same thing, but really the, the technique is essentially the same, is you're just really training muscle memory into your picking hand. So you really eventually just kind of get a feel for where the low E string is, where the D string is, where the high E string, where the, where the B string is. You can really eventually just focus in and always hit, almost always hit the string that you're looking for, right? So really it's just about uh, finding whatever technique works for you. Again, I usually kind of have my wrist anchored closer to the bridge because my style has a lot of palm muting in it too. Again, a lot of people float, they do the same thing. Uh, but really, some people really brace with their, with their forearm and just kind of have like a fixed point to float through the strings. Again, I'm almost kind of braced in some way and there's different schools of thought on that. But basically, it all started from really playing chords too because this isn't just like a lead thing being able to always hit what you're looking for. You want to do the same thing within chords. Like let's take this, uh, this major seven shape right here which, where I'm really gonna hold down the fourth fret on the A string, sixth fret on the D string, fifth fret on the G string, sixth fret on the B string. Now if I hit the open strings, if I just hit all six strings, it'll sound really bad because I'm hitting open strings along with it. And I think that also comes into part of the problem when it comes to really trying to focus on hitting just the string you want because you're taught to get good tone out of single frets. Like if I just want to hold down the seventh fret on the G string, when you first start out or even if you have a teacher or something, it's like, all right, well come straight down so you're not really kind of like hitting the other strings because you want to get good tone out of every string and not kind of have like buzzy technique. But once you do that, then you almost kind of go the other way and you'll see that like a lot of really good players kind of like relax their hand and you can see that they're hitting other strings, but then you're using your fretting hand to mute the strings that you don't want. So as much as it is, like if I just want to hit the, the 13th fret on the B string to be able to go right to it, a lot of it is, depending on where I'm coming from, you can really kind of just hit like a sloppy thing like that. Like I just hit the whole string set and I'm only hitting, I'm only hearing the, the B string. Now the reason I can do that is because if I really go through and hit every string, I'll only be able to hear the B string because in this case, my pointer finger is muting the other strings around it. So once you can get good individual tone from the frets, then you can start thinking about, you know, playing with a little more economy and efficiency by using your fretting hand and the finger or fingers that you aren't currently employing to help mute the strings around the desired tone that you're getting by muting, okay? Because even though something like that isn't really necessarily like the cleanest way to pick an individual note as just hitting the B string on itself will be, you can really, you have a hard time hearing the other notes, even if they're getting harmonics, like so happens to be on like the seventh fret. In the context of what you're hearing, you're not gonna hear a lot of the noise that those mute, muting gets, as long as you really get like a solid kind of hit on that string, right? So I think it's really just kind of about being thoughtful and thinking about which ones am I 
muting around the desired string, and then you don't have to be as precise with your picking hand. Because again, it's hard when you're first starting out and you're trying to like selectively pick a string, but you're also worried about what your fretting hand is doing. And then, you know, you might end up hitting like the wrong note and then you're hitting like all these different strings and stuff like that. So it's really just kind of like a process of building the muscle memory into your picking hand, where when you go down, you hit a down stroke, I can hit one string, two strings, three strings, four strings, five strings, six, without really having to use your wrist in it, right? It's just kind of like a real, a gentle movement of the wrist and your thumb joint. Again, like if I just want to hit the seventh fret on the E string, I don't have to move my wrist at all. I can just boom. Pop it like that, just with, you know, your, your thumb joint kind of applying pressure through the string set. And eventually you just memorize that. So if your hand just memorizes it, you don't even have to think about it. And then you can focus a little bit more on your fretting hand and maybe, you know, getting the best tone and vibrato from individual notes, so on and so forth. So it is a combination of having your fretting hand help mute the problematic areas around what you're going for while you kind of just, you know, develop that muscle memory until you can actually, you know, hit the, the desired string every single time without having to look. A lot of it too is also using the string behind whichever one you're hitting almost as a backstop so you don't go too far away. So again, let's take that, that C note on the B string, that 13th fret. Maybe if I really want to kind of like jump, jump into it like that, you can see that like my pick is going to stop right here. And again, I'm muting it just so you can hear that I'm not really registering the high E string because you wouldn't be able to really hear that over a sustained tone, I suppose. So again, that next string is making sure that I don't get too far away from my target area. And eventually once you just start kind of just taking stabs at it, like in the middle of a chord, just playing your chords more dynamically, like instead of just trying to get all six strings, it's like for a really heavy rock sound, just really kind of break that chord, especially the middle four strings up into little like pieces of chords, like the A and the D string, D and the G string, the G and the B string. And eventually you can start kind of like really doing cool things and making single chords sound a lot more interesting and dynamic because you're taking a full chord and breaking it into smaller pieces. So it really sounds like you're doing something way more impressive than you actually are. So just a couple different thoughts about using maybe dormant fingers or even your thumb, you know, in a lot of cases to kind of mute some of the lower strings for muting strings that you aren't playing to kind of really just give yourself that margin for error when you're trying to train that muscle memory into your picking hand for hitting the right notes. So hopefully that's helpful uh, to you. It's something that I kind of had to work on uh, a long time to really become a cleaner player because my tendency is not one of those to be like, all right, fire up the metronome, and then alternate pick at, you know, 101 BPM, 102 BPM. You know, I'm kind of like a sloppy player at heart. And I do know that once I really started being thoughtful about uh, selectively muting strings and then training that muscle memory into my hand, I noticed that my personal playing cleaned up a lot. So hopefully that was helpful to you. If you have any questions or comments, hit me up in the comment section, Instagram, Twitter, or the website. I'll talk to you all soon. Thanks a lot.